great getaways. Well, today we're traveling to the Rifle River Recreation Area, located in the Osaba River State Forest, which provides a variety of outdoor recreational opportunities for everyone. They've got a lot of things that we haven't seen yet that we're going to be experiencing. I know that you're going to enjoy it. Heather Newhouse, director of the West Branch Visitors Bureau, and Amo Russo, the president, put together an excursion to the Rifle River Recreation Area. Once we arrived, Head Park Ranger Jack Hines assembled his staff for a guided exploration of the park. We're here at the Rifle River Recreation Area right now, and uh, you're probably wondering, we've got quite a crew out here today, and they're going to help us run us around the park, show us a little bit about it, and we're going to be doing some things out here. James, you've got some things that uh, we've got planned. Uh, maybe you can tell us what it, it's going to be. Well, first we're going to start with a hike here on Pintail Pond. It's kind of a, a for the, the more novice group of, of hikers. We do offer 14 miles of hiking trail. Um, this is a mile loop and it's more scenic for people who like to take photographs and see um, unique uh, flowers to our ecosystem here. And, you know, if you just want to go get a good picture with your family. Okay. Go here. We're going to show, show you more about this park as we go along. But right now we're going to take a hike out here in the Pintail Pond. And if everybody wants to... Uh, Head on out, maybe we'll let you guys lead. You probably know the way. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, we're on our way. With seven lakes in the park and hiking and biking trails almost everywhere, this should be a fun trip. So let's see how far we can trek through the park. Okay, Amy, what do you think? Oh, we're in the great outdoors, so nothing is better than that. Especially up north. Uh, toward the end of summer, Michigan, what more can you ask for? We have a nice breeze, the temperature is perfect, and we get to hang out with the DNR and the Rifle River group today. So excited. You're so right, Emil. We just come across the trail. As we're going down, it is an interpretive trail, so we've got some signs out here that let you know about uh, the flora and fauna that is along through here. Uh, this particular one deals with the ferns that are out here. And if you look over to the side, especially here, you will see this is a fern. And there's uh, basically three different kinds that they have in here. And they will grow to different sizes. They're not something that flowers, but will just be green. And it's really pretty. And I know I've got some even at home that uh, I have put in there that just really does looks good does a nice job but these are the things you'll see leave it to me to fall behind i want to hurry and catch up i don't want to miss anything five pairs of loons that um, are in all of our lakes grouse haven grebe and and devoe and uh the trumpeter swans they've had their their young this year and i think they had four and they all look healthy and they're they're not full grown, but they're they're a lot bigger now. But they're on Grebe Lake. They got a nest out there. They're doing really well. So, what what do you usually tell people uh, when they do see them? I know a lot of people. Wow, oh, it's a loon, and they try to get over by it. That's probably not a good idea. Well, we don't like to to drive them out of the area because it's you know a lot of people come to uh, to, to to see the loons, and it's a very popular bird here in Michigan. Um, but there, people do like to get good photographs on them, and they'll they'll tend to paddle up, you know, a little closer than we would like sometimes. But everybody's looking for that perfect shot, right? Well, what about the nesting time of the year, though? Well, yeah, we don't encourage that because uh, you know it's really important. You know, if they have one to two young, you know, we like to you know to keep them. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. like to yeah, keep so them. We don't spook them off the nest. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. But okay. I've been not on this not here but in other lakes not far from here had the loons go right under your boat you know you're like he's fishing you yeah know? well and that's and, the problem sometimes is sometimes they're so curious that they come to you you yeah. know so i mean it's just you, you know you can't avoid that nothing says michigan's wilderness like the lonely call of the common loon we kept moving down the trail until we came to another interpretive sign Alexis, I know as we're going around the trail here, I'm seeing interpretive signs around here. So is this something regular people will see along the trail? Yep, there's multiple spots. We have this one, we have at ones that talk about different types of trees. Um, we have a swamp area that talks about that and it just gives a lot of information about different plant lives, uh, animals, stuff like that. Okay, so it's a good way to go out into the woods then. Take your time, run around, but Take a look at the signs, learn a little bit about where you're at, and about the things you'll see out here. The park has some of workers that are full of knowledge about the park. When you're here, don't be afraid to ask them any questions about the park. 
If they don't have the answers, they will find them. The boardwalk widens up here a little bit farther. Um, you can definitely um, get really close to the wildlife, but you can not hop off of it, or it is okay. a very dangerous <laughs> situation here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, I see it is pretty swampy and stuff in through here. Yeah. So, so And you, you don't want to wander off into that stuff. Do stay on the trail when you're out here. Yeah, so it's we, important. we definitely offer seating for that reason, too. So. Okay, yeah. good place to stop and rest, so come out with the family, and uh, stop, be quiet, you might get a good photo of Amy, an avid outdoorsman, had some great observations. So as we're walking along here, I'm noticing these little trails that go along through here. So the question is, what is it? Could it be a muskrat, um, a beaver, uh, different otters? And, and I'm curious, uh, on what is this considered a wetland and, and what function it provides? Uh, all good questions that we'll catch up to the ranger and ask them. These are our pitcher plants here in the park. Um, they're pretty rare. They live only really around um, fens or wetland areas. Here at the park we kind of brag about them um, because they're pretty rare. We like to just have people come out and appreciate like the nature and finding them. Um, and yeah, they collect water. Basically like they're just here in the wetlands throughout the bog. Um, but definitely along the walkway you can see these and spot these and in about June they'll have these red flowers that look like umbrellas too. You can spot those and when you come out here you'll definitely know what they are now. This unusual plant, usually found in bogs, is carnivorous, feeding on insects that are trapped in its bulbous picture-like leaves. Although this carnivorous plant is a common inhabitant of acidic bogs, it is also found in fens. So James, I was, I was wondering, uh, is, is a bog a wetland and, and, and is a wetland a bog? And if so, what, what are their functions and, and what's their purpose here and, and how does it affect the ecosystem? Well, they're similar in nature here with the Pintail Pond. This was actually um, underneath where we're standing what is, is, uh, is actually what you consider a lake or a pond. And it was just years and years of de decay and debris put a biomat on the top and allowed other um, plants and tree life to grow. So actually when we put in this boardwalk, some of the pilings that had to be driven down, they actually go down 30 feet before they hit any mm. stable ground. So we notice you got signs that say don't get off the boardwalk and off the trail. Sometimes you can walk out into that stuff and you'll, you'll lose your, your footing and you'll be, you'll be in waist high, you know. Fortunately, there's trees and stuff to grab onto, but underneath this is, is actually a lot of moisture and a, a lot of uh, mucky soils. Well, the Northern Fen is, is, is this, this ecosystem here and it's unique to this area and to Michigan altogether. Um, there's not very many places where you find this northern fen bog um, around, so uh, this is a protected area for us, and you know it's just a walking trail only. We don't allow any any fishing or hunting opportunities in this area. So, okay. well, speaking of fishing and hunting opportunities, every now and then we'll see these little trails that go through the the marsh here, and, and it looks like some of them's coming from the water, then then into the woods. Uh, what kind of animals would those be, or could they be, and what are they doing here? Well, this area is, is uh, historically known for, for holding black bear and um, raccoons and some of the other critters that are along here. We have the, the toads and the mink. Um, we got the, uh, the uh, common snipe, uh, different birds and newts. Um, but uh, there is uh, a bear that's active that runs through here and he crosses our main road up by the contact station. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, wildlife and to, to be seen here. Bears? Nobody said there would be bears. I've been told that if you're loud, they will not even approach you. Well, I can do that. I will just laugh really loud. <laughs> Ranger Hines wanted to take us a little bit deeper into the woods. For what, I'm not sure, so I guess we will soon find out. Well, James, I see we've got uh, a little trail that's cutting off our main trail here. Now, where does that go to? Yeah, so these little offshoots, are typically they go down to a more scenic area where people will go and take pictures and stuff. This particular little path here goes down to Gamble Creek. So there's a little creek down here about uh, 50 yards or so, and uh, there's brown trout and rainbow trout in there and, and a lot of the cedars and just a really unique opportunity to get some good photos. Now, somebody's out here with their family. We've got a nice trail here. You get off on these side trails, got to be a little more careful. 
Yeah, you can lose your footing in a hurry. You know, there's a lot of uneven ground. Um, but again, we don't like to maintain these these uh, side areas because we want to prohibit the flow of unnatural material into the river system. Ah, so ah, absolutely. You think we can take a walk down? Absolutely. Let's go check it out. Like to explore, and we do. This is the perfect trail to head down. When you leave the beaten trail, it sure is nice to have a DNR ranger to show you the way. We're down here, I see the creek right out in front of me. I'm a little away from it right now, kind of muddy in front of me, but I'm going to catch up with everybody down the trail, see if we can't get a better look. A lot of lumpy ground, I can tell you there. <laughs> I'm tripping all over everything, but uh, there's a little creek back there, Gamble Creek. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's other places uh, that you'll be able to see this creek too. And it's just, you get these little creeks out here, they're just beautiful. They, they're kind of shallow, but they're running along, and they always look great. I always love to take pictures of it. Before we move into a different part of the park for some fun on the water, Ranger Hines gave us some interesting information on the park that took place over a hundred years ago. So actually the uh, the western edge of this Pintail Pond Trail um, is unique because it was an, actually an old railroad grade that was built back in 1902. Um, so back when the Jewett family owned this, the railroad used to come through here. So this is kind of a, a rail trail, if you will, to, in some regards. Um, but just a little history of the park, you, you know, you, you look at it now and you wonder how in the heck did a train ever get through here, but, you know, things evolve over time and it's just a really cool, cool uh, history lesson for the park. This area was very swampy with creeks around every turn. Emma wanted to know more and asked the right questions to find the answers. We've got numerous creeks that come through here, Gamble being one of them. We've got Oyster Creek, the Prior Creek, the Houghton Creek, they all dump in the rifle at various points throughout the campground. So, so because they're spring fed, that, that keeps them colder longer, right? Yep, and it keeps the water cold. And actually it was, you can pretty much tell um, as you work your way upstream where the springs are more prominent because uh, um, learning from the fisheries guys, you, you know, for the first couple thousand feet, you'll catch browns and rainbows. But as you get closer to the spring fed water, you'll start getting the brookies more. And, and the brook trout will, will start getting closer to that colder water because that's their, their habitat. They need that colder water to survive. So, you know, you can actually see that change just by monitoring the fish po population. So, it's and, and so because we're in a cedar swamp and whatnot, I mean, you have a lot of aquatic uh, insects and whatnot in the water because of that, is that right? Or? Yep, and uh, part of that survey when the fishery guys comes is they'll they'll pull up rocks and they'll take a look underneath of them and see what they're feeding on and whether it's a stonefly or the midge or, or uh, you know, different uh, top water crickets or grasshoppers or whatever. So they'll sample the, you know, the food chain. As we came off the Pintail Trail and back to the beginning, Ranger Hines filled us in on what the next part of our tour would consist of. Well, we made our way back to the beginning. A real nice trail that's out there, James, and it was really nice to have you along because we learned so much more. But for the people that you're out there by yourself, there's a lot of interpretive signs that people can read and learn about the area. Yeah, absolutely, Tom. Yeah, I appreciate you coming along with our walk, and it seemed like it was a long journey, and that's just one mile out of the 14 miles of trail we have. And I understand we're, we're going to do some fishing, and... Uh, Head down to Grebe Lake. Are well, you talking about the trout in the stream and we're going to a lake? I'm going with you. We're going fishing. Let's do <laughs> it. Let's go. Well, you don't have to ask Amel twice when it comes to fishing. He had his tackle box and rod at the ready. Okay, Amel, show us how it's done. Time to do some fish on. Uh, I'm going to probably start with a Rapala and try to see if I can pick up a bass or a bluegill. Being that it's, it's closer to noon, I might put a spinner on something that with a little bit more vibration, a little, little shiny action. And uh, right about now is the time where they may settle down a little bit and not be in a feeding habit. So may have to antagonize them a little bit to, to get a bite, we'll see. While Amel continued his fishing, Ranger Hines told us more about how anyone that visits the park is invited to fish with the park's gear and all the other programs offered by the park for the visitor. For the Explorer Guide program, which is uh, this year was a young lady named Lindsay and she has um, went back to college already, but uh, during the summer she ran a fishing program 
and typically every year we have our explorer guide do different programming and the fishing's one of them so we developed these little racks we made up because we actually got about six sets of these and upwards of 30 rods that we're able to bring down and get the kids from the campground and the park to come in and take part in that fishing program so she comes down once a week typically in the evening time and you know we'll bait the hook for the little ones and they can cast out here on our fishing pier and and we're at Grebe Lake now so uh, this is a pretty good fishing lake for if you're interested in bass and pike and bluegill and things of that nature so it's just a handy way to keep the rods intact and uh, keep them neat and orderly. Do you use the leaf setting down here then? That people can, do, can come down here and use them? No not typically we brought these down here today at uh, the park uh, they do uh, uh, trails they do um, uh, bats at night they do they roast s'mores um, they'll go look for um, like uh, different different types of animals within the park uh, a lot of times they'll do like a kayaking program where they'll teach kids how to kayak we'll bring them down here to the kayak launch and and show them how to safely enter the kayak and and, and get on the water you know it's such a great way to bring your family up you want the kids to learn some of this stuff Maybe you don't have all these things yourself. They've got them up here at the park. You can come in here, get involved in the programs. That's so nice. Yeah, and it's just a great way to get people in, you know, engaged in, in the outdoors. James, you were talking about taking us over to another lake to do uh, some paddle boarding or something, but uh, we seem to have turned off the trail and we're back in a cab. But what's this all about? Well, this uh, I made a call up front and asked if there was any cabins open, and, and uh, this just happened to be open today, and I thought what a great way to showcase some other features of our park. Um, these are rustic cabins that were built by the, the MCC crew um, probably 50 to 60 years ago, and they remain relatively the same for, for much of that time frame. Uh, however, we did get some funding, um, uh, supplemental funding uh, for the district, to redo our cabins and this just happened to be one that we got some funding for. Uh, we're actually in the next couple weeks going to be redoing the outside, putting a new coat of paint on it, giving it a facelift and we had already went through the inside and redid the floors, put some new granite countertops in, still got that rustic appeal and the bunk beds are rustic and we did the tongue and groove pine on the ceiling. We did the foyer out here, you can see we did it in tongue and groove cedar, kind of the match the decor on the outside but it was just uh, like a white plywood. So. Uh, just kind of a, a forgotten treasure that, that, that gets overlooked sometimes when you come into the park because these cabins are tucked away um, off the beaten path and there's a lot of seclusion out here. But every one of them is on a body of water. This one just happens to be um, on the Rifle River. The Rifle River runs back through it um, just behind the cabin here. It's easy put in for your kayak or your canoe if you're interested in coming to the park and rent one of these cabins. They go for about $79 a night, so it's pretty affordable if you base it off occupancy of the local areas in town and the hotels and motels so uh, they sleep six they've got propane heat yep. and they got a countertop you know for for your cooking you got an out, outdoor grill so it's you still got that rustic appeal and a campfire so you can en enjoy a, a campfire at night okay so you're going to want to bring your your own water in well we got up we got a pump here we got oh, a hand pump and that's all potable water oh good as Heather finished pumping the water, it was time to head to DeVoe Lake and get in the water. It seemed like the young park crew were more than eager to get on the paddle board and paddle around the lake. They were having such a good time that Heather decided to join them. Well, she was a little unsure of herself at first, but soon got the hang of it. Good job, Heather. Maybe I'll give it a try. Oh, but not today. James, this is a nice little lake, another one of the great lakes that's out here. And you brought us over doing a little paddle boarding, which is uh, got a little bit different. This is something that's just come in to be popular here in the last few years. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, we've been seeing an increase of uh, kayaks and paddle boards, the stand-up paddle boards. Uh, we got a canoe livery that rents canoes, kayaks, and the paddle boards, and we seem to it seems to be a big uh, interest in the paddle boards, uh, bringing a little bit of that West Coast feel into Northern Michigan, you know. So um, some of these lakes, they're surrounded. You can tell they're surrounded by the woods, and you know we're a little bit windy today, but typically there's pretty calm water here, and it's just a good environment to do some paddle boarding because you get that calm, glassy water. And if you're just starting out, it's a really nice environment to start out and stabilize yourself and, and enjoy that. And we got a couple of rookies that went out there today, yeah. and they did great. And they all caught on, didn't and they? So, uh, I, 
I didn't do it. <laughs> There's still time. I learned my lesson a long time ago. <laughs> but it, uh, now, somebody that does want to try it, and they're here, you said they have a place that uh, they can uh, rent it from. Uh, yep. How do they get a hold of this? Well, when they register to camp or you're coming in for the day use visit, if it piques your interest and you want to give it a try, the number's up at our contact station. Uh, the people working the booth can give you the, the contact information. As you drive in, you'll notice their, their job trailer on the left-hand side and their phone number's on the side of their job trailer as well. So uh, if it piques your interest and you're interested in trying paddleboarding or kayaking or canoeing in any one of our lakes or the rivers, um, go up and see the guys at Rollways Canoe Livery and, and uh, get their number and they'll be happy to drop it off your campsite or you can meet them up there and pick it up if you got transportation so. okay tr come out of here try it for the first time and uh, make sure there's somebody standing on shore with a camera that gets you falling in the water that's always a good picture for later <laughs> as we were watching Heather and Trey I noticed a lone kayak coming into shore it was Bill Clark an avid fan of great getaways so I took a few minutes to talk with him and get his impression of the Rifle River Recreation Area. I came back from I came in from Cadillac and then I'm going to North Higgins but I wish I were staying here yeah this is beautiful I recommend that to anybody okay is it your first time then here yes okay and how many of the lakes have you been out on so far no I've just been on this I got here yesterday it's the first oh. time out here so okay. Now, what do you think of the campground? Beautiful. Yeah, Good. beautiful, rustic. Yeah. Have you got Seems a chance to go go no. around the park at all? No, I'm going to go later on the mountain bike and then go sightseeing. It's, it all comes down to a matter of time because you want to get out on the lake, you know? Right, yeah. right. Yeah. 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 i got a diehard fisherman here, and there's first things first, it, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I loved your show. That's Like I say, that's why I'm here. Well, hey, it was so nice to nice. talk to you. Right, I appreciate nice it. You. you take care. The park is also well known for its mountain biking trails. While the trails we were on are mostly flat, windy, and hard packed, you will find more challenging climbs near the north end of the park. The trails are also very scenic with several streams, high vistas, and beautiful lakes. We're on the Trail 25 and we're going to talk about a little bit of bike riding today. Well James, I'll tell you what, I know you mentioned earlier we've got a lot of trails out here. Now, I looked at them as hiking trails, but they, are they also biking trails? Yeah, so these are multi-use trails, and like I said earlier in the segment, we have 14 miles of trails. Uh, skill level ranging from uh, um, beginner to moderate to advanced. Uh, some of the hills are really steep and rocky with, with loose gravel if you're into more of a, an extreme type bike riding. Uh, a lot of our trails are just sandy, you know, easy rolling. Um, but it is a multi-use trail, so it's shared with hikers, walkers, but with the expansion of the fat tire bikes, we see a lot of more, lot more of those coming into the park. Um, they're a, a little easier to ride our trail system with the fat tire bike, uh, just because they got more traction and stability in the loose sand. Uh, one thing too, you've always got all your roads that are through here that I guess everybody can ride their bikes on that too. Absolutely, just be careful. Uh, the bikers have the right of way. Uh, typically we have people from the modern campground when they do their exploring around the park and they come deeper into the, the southern section of the park, they'll ride their bikes from the modern campground down the main straightaway and you can take it all the way to Sage Lake Road and you can wrap it around. Uh, you can just go for miles and never hit the same trail twice. Yep, so there's a lot of great opportunities if you like that. And I know a lot of people at the camp, I, all the time I'm seeing they've got bikes with them and they want to run around these parks and there's just a lot of trails here to do it on. So bring your bikes when you come up here to the Rifle River Recreation Area. Jamie, I'd just like to say thank you to you yeah. for a great day and all the great help you got out here too. One of the things I noticed see, were some great people that went out with us today. Yep. Happy, knew their way around, good people. Thank yep. you. You bet. You guys take care and thanks for coming and including us in on your segment today. All right.